Hey guys, it's Barrett from the Gimpy Camper. We're coming at you today from North Carolina. We traveled down here, down Highway 64, to a place called Jack Rabbit Mountain in Hayesville, North Carolina. Never heard of it. Found it on Campendium. Thought I'd check it out because you guys know I'm a sucker for those National Forest sites and that's what this is. First things first, look at this beautiful scenery around here. See these leaves? This is like the peak of leaf season around here and we're here just in time. You know, this is a dry camping area. There's no electricity or anything like that. They do have a dump station. They do have uh, some places to put your trash, that kind of stuff. But there's no electricity. So times like this, it's not that big of a bother because it's nice and cool. It's the end of October here. Sadly, they're going to be closing this site for the next uh, couple of months starting November 1st. So you'll have to wait till the spring to enjoy this. As far as cell phone service, we do have two bars of 4G LTE on the Verizon network, which is a lot more than I thought we were going to have. Uh, I didn't think we were going to have any service whatsoever when we came out here, so I was pleasantly surprised about that. Because, let's face it, you guys know I'm a gadget guy. Now about the campsites here. If you got a big rig, you don't have too many options, so we're going to go over those. I initially got site 75 on loop B. It looked like it would fit my camper. It wasn't near the water, which is what I really wanted. Um, loop A, the half closed already. And so I just went with it. But the bathhouse is located in an area that I just couldn't get my trailer into. Granted, it was dark and it was raining. So that compounded the problem. And I think I could have probably got it with a little bit more work if I could see better. So probably I'm going to end up putting backup lights on the camper because the cameras, they do good at night vision, but especially when it's raining, you still can't see anything. Now I would say their premium camp loop is loop A, but again, if you have anything over 20 feet long, you're going to have an issue finding somewhere um, that's down near the water. They do have some longer sites, but those are going to be kind of back on the, on the back of the loop away from the water. Now on the first couple we'll go over, there is a trail that goes straight to the little beach area where you can swim and stuff in the summertime. Obviously you don't want to swim right now. It's been 50 degrees around here, which is great. The other thing is that almost none of these sites are level. They're all almost going to be a little bit nose high. I actually adjusted my trailer after the first night because it was affecting the refrigerator function. And that's the thing with the fifth wheel is those legs that you do, the, the quick release where you let the legs down you got to leave them up far enough where you think you can lower it and have enough that movement left of that jack where you can lower it down after they're touching the ground and you pull out i did that i thought i left a good six inches of play there that first night but it was still about three or four inches too high on the nose so i went back and adjusted it let it down quite a bit more um, and it's still about an inch high in the nose but it was good enough for my OCD at that point. So we'll go over loop A here. Loop A is their premium loop, in my opinion, if you're gonna have a camper. A lot of the other sites are great if you're gonna be tent camping. You gotta be a little careful with hammock camping because some of the sites are big gravel pads and there's no trees like in that initial area. So on loop A, the ones that I would recommend the most if you look up the side and it fits your camper would be sites 17, 18, 19, and 20. They're right on the water. It's some of the very few sites where the uh, picnic area is right level with the camper. A lot of times there's gonna be steps going up or down to the, the table from the camper in most of these sites. Now those sites are gonna be a little bit nose high. Like I said, most of these are. And the next ones that I would recommend if those are full and you're wanting to bring your camper would be 9, 12, 13, and 15. Now, those are still going to be a little bit nose high, but they have a huge pad. But like I say, they're not level with the camper. My next choice would be site 5, which is still short. And you guessed it, nose high. Now, if you have a large camper, then my recommendation is going to be sites 26 or 27. Those are fairly level, it looked like, after you get up on the, the level part of the pad. They're very long, 
and there is a trail right there that goes down to the water and really you're pretty close to the water you just you're just not camping on the water and if you have a bigger rig you can also do 28 through 31 they're right there in that same area as the last two i said they're just a little further away from the trail to the beach if that's important to you the best tent site that i would pick in loop a would be site 24. it looked amazing the ones that I would specifically avoid in loop A would be 3, 4, and 11. 11 probably looks like a good large pull-through side on the internet. I'm telling you guys, internet pictures can be deceiving. However, your picnic table and stuff is actually going to be behind your camper. And it's about 10 steps or so. Now, you're going to have a good look at the lake, but it's going to be over the other campers that are in front of you. And... I don't even think there's enough room there for you to put your steps out and still have room to step down and not be going down a hill. So I wouldn't do it. Now, if you're going camping and you're going with a buddy, you may think about doing site 36. Again, it's in the back of the loop. It's a double site. It's a double fee. Um, but I don't think it's too useful because basically it looks like an area where you can parallel park to campers side by side so whoever's on the back is not going to have any use of their their patio because there's another camper within like a couple of feet there so i mean if you were going with a friend and you wanted to have a bigger site and they were tent camping that might be great but i wouldn't really recommend it for campers i'll just get two sites beside each other now we'll talk about loop b loop b is a great area for tent camping there's very few RV sites there that I would recommend. This is mainly because the sites are very short, um, they're not very level, and the fire ring and picnic table is usually up or down some steps. If you can fit in them, 66 and 70 are pretty good RV sites. That's the best I can find in the loop. Like I say, 75 was okay, but I couldn't fit in there. It was long enough, but I couldn't make the turn with my truck in the rain and the dark. Another great site in loop B is site 78. Now it's short. It's flat though. That's about the only flat site I found around here. And it's really close to the bathroom. So if you have a handicap or something and being close to the bathroom is important to you, that's a great site. Now there are a ton of tent sites that I would recommend in loop B because they are just gorgeous. They're right on the water. You got beautiful scenery. Now, granted, it's fall and half the leaves have fell around here, so I don't know what kind of scenery you're going to have in the middle of summer. But right now, it's gorgeous views. So, in order of my recommendations of Loop B of tent sites. So, these aren't chronological. These are how I would pick to stay there. Would be 48, 46, 62, 71, and 72. Now, if you're going to hammock camp, I would suggest Loop B Site 55. It looked good with plenty of trees where you could have an option for a hammock. So let's talk about loop C. It's our final loop. All right, so when I couldn't fit in B75, the campground host said he could move me over here. And so I said, sure, you come over here. It's actually in the beginning of the loop. Um, you go around the loop where it splits. There's the better longer sites here and that would be 98 99 and 100 for rvs now like i say they're fairly nose high and they're more nose high than i actually suspected it to be and even when i was setting it up so you got to keep that in mind now i've been pretty happy with site 100 and i'm going to show you some footage of that too but you can't see the water um, it's actually behind these trees here. There's a little trail there. Now the trail's not that far. It's probably about 200 feet. And then you're at the water. Of course, the water's down right now. Uh, but I think that it would make a pretty good site in the summertime. But I would really prefer to be over there in Lupe in one of those few sites that I told you about where you can actually, like, just sit in the camper and look out and see. Ah! Now the tent sites that I would prefer in Site C would be 85, 89, 90, and 97. So this is just a weekend warrior trip. We come down here on Friday night. It takes about an hour and a half from the house. 
and you know we're leaving today it's sunday it's about noon now check out times two i'm getting ready to start packing up you know the weather it's been hit or miss there was a 90 percent chance of rain on friday i don't let rain keep me at home guys if i would have let rain keep me at home anytime they said it was going to rain last winter i would have never left the house so you got to get out there and you got to enjoy life because life don't wait on the rain Don't forget to hit that subscribe button.